Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Matt Gibb. Uh, I work at a company called Radiant Solutions. Uh, the program says I work at the American Red Cross. I no longer work at the American Red Cross. So if you're expecting a Red Cross talk, I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I think this talk will still be pretty great um, since, I, since, since I made it. Um, so I, I work at a company called Radiant Solutions. We're owned by a company called Maxar. Um, we're sister companies, uh, if you will, with Digital Globe. Uh, Kevin Bullock from Digital Globe is actually giving a talk right next door. I hope you stay for this one. But um, Digital Globe and Radiant Solutions, we're, we're, we're good friends. Um, so just to introduce Radiant to you a little bit. Uh, we're located just outside of Washington, D.C. in Herndon, Virginia, where it's not quite as swampy. Um, and so when I was looking at the program after my talk was accepted, I saw the folks who I was going to be presenting with today. And I wanted to really make sure that we weren't going to be talking too much about the same topic um, and re rehashing the same ideas over and over again. Um, but after definitely not procrastinating on my talk, um, things became pretty clear. Uh, street cred is changing, is really changing how people capture and validate uh, POIs. And, and Mapbox has been able to efficiently validate data at scale uh, by looking at every single change set. Um, Diana and Lucas and their teams are, are really pushing the boundaries and finding new ways to fill gaps in data gathering and validation. Um, so that, that idea really helped me hone in on what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, and it's not anything new. Um, it's not my goal to push any boundaries with this talk, um, but to actually think inside our box. Uh, and that's not cool. Um, <laughs> and and look at what we already have uh, and how we can improve the validation experience for the OpenStreetMap user. So this is uh, validation of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, half a score and four years ago, our founders uh, brought forth on this internet a new map, uh, conceived in nodes and dedicated to the proposition that all data is created open. Um, I'll try and limit the puns um, and historical references from here on out, uh, uh, but that one fit. And President Lincoln only spoke for two minutes, so that would make a really awkward 18 minutes um, that we have left together. Um, and again, as long, it's open and free as long as you attribute, share alike, and keep open. So I'd like everyone to go way back and think about your first edit in OpenStreetMap. Where was it? When was it? Did anyone teach you? And why did you do it? So my first edit was five years ago. Um, it was mapping in the Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan. Um, my roommate, Camilla, was like, hey, there's this cool thing, OpenStreetMap. Um, and there's this cool group, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Let's help and map some stuff. I'm like, OK, cool. Um, so that's why I did it. That's what I did. There's my first change set. Um, isn't that a very descriptive um, change set comment? Um, very, very helpful for anyone who wants to go there after the fact. Um, and I would like to show you my first edits in OpenStreetMap. How, how about those? Um, <laughs> um, those are still there. I took these screenshots the other day. Those are still there. Um, and, and I chose not to fix them as I, uh, as I looked at them. Uh, I will say that one that doesn't look like there's a building underneath it, imagery changes, all right? Places change, it's been five years, so I will say there was probably a building there at one point. Um, so yeah, they're not great. Um, I thought I killed it. Um, so that, and that was it. I didn't edit it again in OpenStreetMap for two years. Um, until I was unemployed, uh, sitting in my parents' house after grad school, and, and I remembered, oh yeah, there's that OSM thing that we did. I live in a small town, it's probably not mapped. Sure enough, I went, I looked, it wasn't. So I spent some of my lovely unemployed time mapping um, my small town. Um, so I just sort of went at it, started mapping small town in upstate New York, um, mapped all the buildings in Jossum, mapped a bunch of POIs. I also didn't realize that there was a building tool in Jossum until after 
I finished mapping my town. Now, it's only a couple hundred buildings, like, and I was unemployed, it's fine. Um, I also didn't know that there was an orthogonalized tool, or, you know, press Q and all your buildings are magically squared. Didn't know it. Um, I was just sort of figuring it out as I went along. And so, while there's so many more people learning and contributing to OSM, I personally do not want their experience to be like mine. Um, we don't need any sort of gatekeeping in this community. Um, there certainly needs to be a burden of wanting to contribute quality data for, from a new user. Um, but we need to expect that things won't be perfect. Um, well, we all learn this way is not a good answer, and it's not good, good enough anymore. Um, and I'd like to highlight a lot of the things that the community is doing and the great steps that are already headed in the right direction. And so again, thinking back to your first edit, how did you know what you were doing? Uh, where did you look for help? Why did you tag the way you did? Why did you do it? Did you ask the community first? Did you square your buildings? It's a lot for a new mapper. It's a lot to take on. And for me, um, those are not necessarily questions that I knew how to answer when I first started mapping either. Um, OS, OSM is free, it's open, and it's decentralized, which it certainly has its pros and cons. It lets we, as the OSM US community, map how we want to map. It lets me, as a guy who maps POIs for indoor play places, uh, where I take my kids to their friends' birthday parties and stand in a padded room surrounded by screaming six-year-olds for two hours, um, it, it lets me map those and tag them how I see fit, which is usually amenity equals gateway to hell. Um, <laughs> I kid, but we have a lot of freedom to map what we want in OSM, right? Um, and there's so many great tools to help with that, but they live everywhere. And as a new user, we don't know what we don't know. Um, so like I said, there's a, uh, a lot of good steps already in the right direction. Um, it's, it's our responsibility as an OSM community to make sure that new mappers have the resources they need. The ID editor team has done something great in pointing people to events that happen locally. That's the first thing you see right after you make your first edit now. That's awesome. Uh, Learn OSM is a fantastic resource that I tell everyone to go to whenever I get the chance. Go to Learn OSM. It's fantastic. Um, the, the new version of the Tasking Manager provides a platform for mappers to ask questions as they map. There are local mappers who take it upon themselves to reach out and give users feedback. Uh, like this note, I got a little while after I mapped my hometown. It was a few months later. Um, it's short and sweet, but to me, it really meant a lot. Um, we need more of this. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Russ is here at the conference, but if you are, and if you're in this room, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. So in the last two years, as we all know, uh, the focus on machine learning has increased. And when it comes to drawing buildings and roads from satellite imagery, there's really no better way to improve efficiency in creating a base map. Um, this has, is going to have a huge impact on OSM. Uh, while there's justified hesitation to some of these changes, companies are working with the community to make this data available and useful for OSM. Um, you know, this summer, Microsoft released building footprints for the entire US. Facebook is working on importing roads into, into Thailand for, in, in OSM. And Digital Globe has their open data program providing pre and post uh, disaster imagery, uh, and sometimes even uh, vector layers um, from machine learning uh, to the community to use for OSM. So it's, and this is just a very small sample. There's a number of companies here who are contributing in many different ways to OSM. So thank you for that. Um, it's, machine learning is not going away. Uh, but how do, how do we manage it? Especially when we need to ensure the quality of the data. And how, more importantly, how do we do it without alienating the most important part of the community, the users? We do it by making the users better. I'm pretty sure this is my last historical reference. <laughs> Within the OSM ecosystem, uh, there's a huge number of open source tools um, that, that can be used to address issues of data quality. These are often created by volunteers or even companies dependent on the continuing success of OSM. These tools range from analyzing every single change set submitted uh, to running topological checks on subsets of the data. 
These are all links to currently or soon to be open source GitHub repos. Uh, these are all created to fill a gap in validation. And it's a gap that still exists, but we shouldn't forget about these. Um, because there's some really cool stuff that we can do with it. So here's the problem as I see it. We have all of the users, over a million, right, and growing. Um, we have all the tools to find these issues. That last page, you can find any number of issues in, in OSM data. And we have all the scary robots that are going to take our jobs and map all of our buildings, right? But it's going to leave us open to do more and better things with OSM. We don't, the issue we have is we don't have as many users fixing, fixing issues and giving feedback to new users who can add more detailed information to the map, the things that the machines can't do. And so how do we improve the com a community member's skill set while improving map quality? Again, we need to look at the tools that already exist. Um, this is one workflow, one workflow that I've looked at. And there's many more permutations, combinations of all the tools I listed and, and many more. Um, but we, we really need to see what's out there and build the bridges between them so that the community isn't operating in silos. Uh, we'll dive further into the process, but to uh, just briefly outline, uh, map rules, which I'll talk about a little bit more, um, it, and the tasking manager, we can restrict what and where people map, resulting in fewer errors. We can take that data from OSM and then run it through Osmos uh, and check for topological and tagging errors. And then we can feed selected errors into Map Roulette or the Tasking Manager to then go and have the crowd fix those issues. Um, use whatever your preferred editor is um, and, and let people fix it. Um, but we really need to make sure that there is a central location to really bring all this information back and, and again, build the bridges. So to dive in a little bit more about the tools, map rules is one new tool that I'll talk about. Um, this was developed by uh, some folks at Radiant Solutions. They are giving a talk tomorrow. It is a brand new open source tool for the OSM community. They're talking about it tomorrow. You should go to their talk. It's great. Um, I don't want to steal too much of their thunder, but it, um, it utilizes preset options within ID or JOSM. Uh, to restrict what a user can or cannot map as part of a project or a campaign. And if a user violates these specific conditions, the issues are flagged prior to uploading their data. And that gives them an opportunity to correct them. Now, this is only for specific projects that are using the tool, but will help with large mapping campaigns that often attract new mappers uh, who may not be as familiar with how to map. And plus, you receive instant feedback uh, saying what you did or did not do correctly. Um, and as a validator going into that project, uh, you know going in that there's going to be at least a certain standard met. And again, that talk will be in this room tomorrow at 11 a.m. Map rules, 11 a.m. tomorrow. You should go. Um, Osmos is the OpenStreetMap oversight engine. It was developed by the OSM France community. Uh, what it does, it runs a series of Python scripts to identify potential topological and tagging errors, like crossing buildings, for example. Uh, there, these issues can vary in terms of their difficulty to fix, and it's a fantastic way to identify issues to be fixed as part of a larger campaign. Uh, it also has a feature which, uh, which lets a user, when logged in uh, to the OSM account, uh, can see what issues that they have potentially created. Uh, and this serves as a good reality check and feedback mechanism for improving a user skill set. Um, it's sort of cut off at the top there, but I'm logged in and it says I have uh, 2,500 potential issues. So like I said, a reality check for me, they could be false positives, but they could be very real issues that I need to go and fix, and I should go do that. This is just uh, a quick snip of the, the user page where you can see which errors you fixed go ahead and, and dive in to fix them. The tasking manager, as many of you know, was created by the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. It splits up an area for collaboration when mapping. And this platform allows for users to check out a task, map it, mark it ready for review, uh, and then they can receive feedback from a more experienced mapper or validator um, if it's necessary. 
There is also an opportunity to ask questions to other users mapping as part of the, the same project. Another tool for fixing multiple issues at one time is uh, MapRoulette. Uh, in MapRoulette, a campaign or a challenge is created for a specific issue. You can see here this is uh, fixing bridges without a layer tag um, in Italy. Um, and so what it does is it sends you to an issue, you go in, you fix it, you click I fixed it, and it sends you automatically to the next one so you can just go through and very quickly uh, fix issues. Um, you can also see that there's a difficulty rating. It's e uh, this one is listed as easy because you're going in and you're adding uh, a layer tag. If we can direct users to use tools like, uh, like Map Roulette, they can find an easy task and maybe expand their knowledge of how certain tagging schemas work. Maybe they go, they learn how to map a bridge, and they start doing that other places as well because it's a pretty simple task and you just do it a bunch of times and you get good at it. Um, we need to figure out new ways to use these tools uh, and in integrate them together. So why not use the tasking manager for a validation only project? Uh, fixing roads in an area in South Korea or China where cities are popping up faster than new imagery can keep up. Or fixing highway equals road tags in a district in uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo. Or, uh, like was done prior to State of the Map US, um, you know, using the tasking manager to do a POI collection in downtown Detroit using street level imagery. That was a cool use of the tasking manager which I hadn't seen before. And it was fun to contribute to. And so this is sort of my soapbox and my call to action for everyone here. Contribute your code, share your workflows, find new ways to use these old tools. Um, I'm not saying new tools don't solve, solve problems, because they do. There are many gaps left to fill. Um, but we should be smart about things because we work better together. And so by directing OSM community members towards issues that are fixable at their own skill level, mappers can expand their knowledge of, tag of the tagging schema, therefore expanding how they can contribute. Mappers can feel more empowered to correct other issues, like, hey, I fixed this bridge, I bet I could fix this other thing too. Uh, mappers become more connected to the greater OSM community. Some people only map railways, some people only map roads or bike paths. Uh, but by broadening the knowledge of new users, they're able to contribute in other ways that they may not have thought before, uh, that may align with their interests. But the biggest hurdle is making these connections between these tools and providing that feedback back to the user uh, so that they can keep returning in a meaningful way. And I get it, some of the stuff that I've said here is a bit crunchy, and when I put it to practice, this isn't going to stop a group of middle schoolers from going in and tracing things in their school parking lot. Um, but that's not the gap that I'm trying to address. Um, the data working group, other companies that are invested in validation, local OSM uh, chapters, they're all finding ways to address sort of uh, grand validation scales uh, and, and um, vandalism. But what I'm talking about is finding the user who had a really bad first change set and helping them map a slightly better second change set um, and so that they can have a really good 1,000th change set. Because we need to resolve that the mappers for the last 14 years have not contributed in vain and that the map of the users, by the users, and for the users shall not perish from the earth. So, thank you very much. Um, I do have a small plug. We are hiring at Radiant Solutions.